Welcome in. Hi, gang of my radar I'm meteorologist Matt Fucci. You know, fall is the season of fog, so let's break down for you exactly what fog is and how it forms. You may have heard people before talk about how fog is just a cloud on the ground, and it's true. We're actually just kind of walking through cloud particles, which is neat, but it's tough to draw fog. I was trying to figure out how to draw it on a whiteboard. Can't really do that. So instead, let's walk you through exactly how it forms. Now, any parcel of air, any pocket of air can be described by a couple attributes, air pressure, the temperature and the dew point. The dew point is a measure of how much water is in that pocket of air. Every parcel or pocket of air on Earth can be described by a couple of different attributes, air pressure, temperature, and dew point. Dew point, of course, how much moisture is in that pocket of air. As air temperature increases, the air can hold exponentially more water. We call that relationship the clausius clapeyron relationship. That's why a warmer world is a wetter world, but as temperatures cool down, the air suddenly can't hold as much moisture, and if the temperature cools to the dew point, the air gets rid of moisture. We call that saturation. If ever you've seen rain, snow, or any form of precipitation, you know the air is saturated and has to rid itself of moisture. That's where fog comes in. You see, normally we have cooler temperatures aloft in the atmosphere. That's why clouds are high up, because that's where the air is reaching saturation. But sometimes the temperature and the dew point are close enough at the surface to give us that saturated air and to produce fog, basically a cloud at ground level. We can look at something called a sounding, basically a schematic diagram of the temperature and dew point with height in the atmosphere or a profile. This one I drew just kind of an example as to what setup would favor fog. Temperature is in red, dew point is in green. We have height going up like this and temperature of course is down here. So sometimes at the surface, you get something called radiational cooling, where the ground actually cools faster than the air above it. That's why you'll notice the temperature right at the ground level is actually lesser than just above. And that's why down here too, the temperature has fallen to the dew point. So the air in this level down here is saturated. It's only right near the ground, however, and that's why oftentimes you see fog in valleys or right near ground level, but not farther aloft. In fact, I was actually once in the Prudential Center in Boston, the biggest building in the city, where the lower floors had fog, and if you went high enough, it was a nice sunny day. So that's why if you're in skyscrapers, you can sometimes see this effect actually manifest. Farther aloft, temperature and dew point naturally fall with height because the temperature cools down, the air pressure drops, so air kind of expands. It's a long story, it's something called adiabatic. We won't go into that today, but just trust me, air temperature falls with height. So up here, we don't have to worry about, what we care about is way down here. So dew point and temperature matched up, that produces fog. Now fall is prime for fog because oftentimes you get that radiational cooling at night that lets the temperature drop down to the dew point. You see, dew point doesn't really change, but temperature fluctuates quite a bit. So we have a couple different setups here. Let's talk about trees, okay? At nighttime, the ground will radiate out. It'll give off heat, and that means the temperature will drop. So let's say, for example, you have a forested area. At night, the temperature wants to drop. The ground wants to give off heat, and it does. So the temperature should drop. But here's the thing. This tree canopy here absorbs that heat and re-emits it both up and down. So it goes back down, and it heats the surface again, and that exchange of heat keeps the ground warmer than it otherwise would be, so temperature would actually increase in a forest versus the surrounding areas. So you don't really get radiational cooling in a forest. That's why it's difficult to get temperatures to drop all that much. Similar story with a blanket of cloud cover. That's why you might oftentimes notice the calmest, coolest nights are the clearest ones. When you have cloud cover, the ground tries to radiate outwards. It can't all the way because the cloud cover once again radiates up and down so that heat, infrared, goes back down and into the ground once again. So you don't cool off quite as much. A microcosm of that can be realized when you have moist air. Let's say, for example, you have a lake, a pond, even in Washington, D.C., where I am, the Potomac. That allows enough moisture to be in the air that as you try to radiate outwards, that moisture kind of gives the heat back down and moist air doesn't cool off as quickly as dry air anyway. So it's tough to get radiational cooling there too. So you just can't really do it. The best environments for radiational cooling is where the air is dry enough, the temperatures can fall quickly after sunset, you have no cloud cover and no bodies of water nearby. And as a result, those temperatures can radiate outwards and suddenly temperature falls like a rock. In Washington, D.C., for example, we have one place that's a really good radiator, Manassas, that fell to 29 degrees at the same time Quantico on the Potomac River, just like 15, 20 miles away, was in the 50s. That's how much of a difference radiational cooling can make. Now, radiational cooling is key to getting fog in the fall because if you have just enough moisture left behind, you cool temperature right near the surface down to the dew point and you get that fog to materialize. 
Terrain can also play a role. Sometimes you get little local areas that are colder than the surroundings. For example, valley fog. Let's say over here, for example, the ground radiates outwards. Well, here's the thing. Cool air is dense. It hugs the ground, okay? So you might have a very small, shallow layer of cool air. That cool air will sink downhill, and you'll get kind of this pool of cold air right down here in this valley. So down here, we'll cool to the dew point. That will create its own layer of fog that might only be, let's say, 20, 30 feet thick. So this will all be fog and the surrounding higher areas won't be nearly as foggy or may see temperatures that are a lot warmer and no fog at all. So that's why in the fall, driving is actually kind of challenging sometimes because you can go through all these areas where different terrain may favor different visibilities. So fog is inveterate to the fall, but if you look, it's actually quite pretty when you see that valley fog. In the winter time, temperature drops enough that ordinarily you don't have much moisture in the air, but once in a great while, you can get something called freezing fog where the air is at saturation slightly above freezing, but the ground itself is below freezing, so those super-cooled water droplets freeze onto the ground and accrete into a dangerous layer of ice. Follow My Radar on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox and Windows.